let's hear his talk about the events that are unfolding in Israel right now. Um, what were your thoughts when you first heard what was happening? I was stunned, surprised, um, but when I thought for about a minute and a half, it wasn't unexpected because I knew Hamas that was engaging in the attacks uh, wanted to completely derail anything that might have occurred between the U.S., the Israelis, and the Saudis because they don't want a political solution. They don't want to recognize the state of Israel, and they were fearful it was headed in that direction. And then the second reason was Hamas is competing for the, the minds and ideas of the entire Palestinian community, and they know the Palestinians on the West Bank um, and Abbas, he is old. And so this is all part of who is going to direct us into the future. And I know that the, what's been happening in Israel is something that is complex and also has been going on for some years. For the people who don't really have a grasp and haven't done that much reading on it, what is the most important thing for them to understand in this respect? I think the most important for me is the realization that an effort to try and squeeze a solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict through diplomacy won't happen unless the respective sides want it. And I know the two respective sides are not yet institutionally, intellectually, or politically prepared for it. Um, it happens, this particular event uh, unfolds 50 years after Israel's 9-11, um, if you want to call it that, when it was attacked on Yom Kippur Day, October 6, 1973. And for many Israelis, this is a, a deja vu all over again and not a very welcome one. Um, it was a, a catastrophic event that's unfolding, so we don't know what the magnitude is. We don't know the number of deaths. Uh, but having talked to a, a bunch of colleagues in Israel and across the Middle East today, th they say this was as, as striking an event as the October war was when Syria and Israel, when Syria and Egypt attacked Israel. Tell me more about that. I, I know, I only know because I've done a little bit of Googling. Um, what happened um, during that Yom Kippur attack? Um, the president of Egypt wanted to find a way to get the Americans involved in diplomacy. Kissinger wasn't paying attention as Secretary of State. He decided he would try a limited military attack against Israel. He succeeded in crossing the canal. Israelis had occupied that part of Sinai. The Israelis responded. They then went across the canal the other way. The war ended with neither side victor, victorious nor vanquished. Uh, a diplomatic process unfolded. Henry Kissinger uh, choreographed it for the next three years. Uh, Carter picked it up. And the war that started in 1973 ultimately ended in a peace treaty in 1979. The chances of diplomacy coming out of it this time is about a chance of me being able to dunk over LeBron James. Mm. I don't think anybody could dunk over LeBron James at this stage, except for maybe his son, Bronny. Um, speaking of um, you know, diplomacy, we heard from Netanyahu, which is considered war at this point. So what does that now mean for the United States? I think the United States has will pretty much take the position that it will stand behind Israel under all circumstances. Um, I think the United States um, has made that quite clear over the last 75 years, and Joe Biden has throughout his uh, tenure working in Washington over three decades. Um, I think the Israelis are uh, stunned, shocked, um, totally uh, uh, fearful that there may still be, as we do this recording, there still may be Hamas operatives that are running around the southern part of Israel and holding Israelis hostage. Um, all you can do in an ongoing situation is put your hand up and say, I support you, tell us what you need, but you really can't be very specific about saying what that's going to be. Is it going to be intelligence gathering? Is it going to be uh, arms and equipment? Is it going to be more missiles to protect against rockets being fired into Israel. It's, it's all too much up in the air, <laughs> don't mean the pun, to, for us to really speculate exactly. 
What I believe, and here is a question you didn't ask. Um, this is a massive mistake of Israeli intelligence. Um, the Israelis had the intelligence before the 1967 war that it looked like the Arab states were massing, but they couldn't evaluate the intention of the Egyptians and the Syrians. Here, it appears that very few people even speculated that Hamas would engage in such an attack, which was highly coordinated, was land, sea, and air, which suggests to me that whatever they did and wherever they planned it probably was not in close proximity where the Israelis could be listening. So my speculation is it was probably planned probably in some foreign capital that's very friendly to Hamas, maybe Damascus and maybe Tehran, and maybe it unfolded because there were individual units who weren't told about the date and time until the last moment so it couldn't be uh, let out over a telephone phone call. So what's clear is Hamas got a hold of social media very early in this. They started showing pictures very, very early on. It happened at 6.30 in the morning. Um, Israelis were just waking up. Um, and I suspect this is going to be an ongoing situation for at least a week and there's going to be a retaliation. But I would think that the retaliation won't just be against Hamas and the Gaza Strip. I suspect the Israelis are going to engage in retaliation much further afield if they are able to understand where it was planned. I was going to say, would that be because they would also want to retaliate against any foreign entity, any foreign government that may have aided them in assisting and making sure this happened? Probably not a government, but probably individuals who might be living in, let's say, a capital where the planning could have taken place. Um, you got to be real careful about how you speculate when a, an event is less than 24 hours old. Fair. Fair. Um, as you mentioned, this is an evolving situation. We don't know how catastrophic it could be. But what do you think the wider impact will be, especially because this is happening so close to the anniversary of such a major historic event? Well, it's interesting you ask because the Israelis in the last two weeks have been looking at video footage. They've been reading articles in the newspaper about the October war, about the surprise attack. There's been this looking back at what happened and gosh, I hope it doesn't happen again. And just before you say that intellectually, it actually does occur and occurs with a vengeance which um, I don't think any Israelis would, had anticipated that Hamas could have engaged in. The bigger picture, the bigger picture is I think the U.S.-Saudi-Israeli deal about recognition is certainly off the table. I also believe those who have been dreaming about a two-state solution now realize that there's, there is remaining within the, the Palestinian national movement an organization that absolutely will not recognize and accept the state of Israel, and that's Hamas. Hamas has made it clear over the years it has no tolerance for the state of Israel. It doesn't want to recognize it. It doesn't want to negotiate with it. And the, the failure of Americans and analysts have been that we have not been reading Arabic newspapers. We are believing our, our, our mindset that says, oh, yeah, it's coming to an end, or we want it to come to an end. But the reality is, it's far from that. And I think people who have dreamed of a two-state solution are going to have to put that not only in their back pocket, but they may have to put it far away on a far-off shelf because the trust does not exist now between Israelis and Palestinians to reach some sort of negotiated settlement. And, of course, this is something you're an expert in. Um, can you talk about how, at least as far as your understanding, how this has evolved? over the years i mean you mentioned that there were some who were hoping for a two-state solution sure when that before that was even on the table you know what were we looking at um it took the palestinians more than 50 years to recognize israel when israel was created in 48 they didn't want to recognize it after the 67 and 73 wars they didn't want to participate in diplomacy they only recognized Israel in 1993, and the hope was, well, if now that the two, two of them are recognizing each other, maybe they can dance together. They, maybe rather than a bear hug, maybe it'll be a Virginia reel or a waltz. But the point of it is, the Palestinians just couldn't reach the conclusion of saying, we'll accept Israel 
in part of historic Palestine, all the land or some of the land west of the Jordan River. Once Arafat and the PLO recognized the state of Israel, Hamas took up the call, took up the flag and said, "No, absolutely not. We refuse to recognize Israel, negotiate with Israel. We're going to be the standard bearer for using struggle and violence and opposition, and we'll do whatever we can." This is the fifth time that Hamas and in Israel, Israel have come to loggerheads using violence, and Hamas will not accept the state of Israel. And the Jewish state isn't going to go away, and Hamas isn't going to accept it. So you're in a position where you're between a rock and a hard place. And um, it's evolved to a point where there's a lot of dream about what you hope will happen, but the reality, I think, has set in in the last 18 hours yeah. that the chances of something positive evolving diplomatically in the next several years is highly, highly unlikely. Is there a chance at all that there could be some form of a, rev a revolution, not a revolution, pardon me, the caffeine's going out, of a resolution if by some miracle Hamas was removed from the equation? It, it won't happen. And why is that? Because Hamas isn't going to voluntarily disappear. And Hamas receives funding from oil producing countries. As long as oil is produced, and the petrodollars evolve, and people want to use their petrodollars for nefarious or toxic purposes, okay. or to support a cause that they believe is just and righteous, mm -hmm. they will use those funds. And Hamas has gone to Arab oil producing countries, particularly Qatar, and Qatar has said, we'll help you, we'll help you, we'll help you. There has to be a very important distinction between those who say, end the Israeli occupation, and what do you mean by ending the Israeli occupation? For some, it means Israel leaving just the territories taken in the 1967 war. For other, it means Israel just going away, period. And the chances of that happening are very, very limited. We have seen so far some reaction. Um, Lucy McBath, Senator Warnock, just to name a few, Ossoff, have all come out um, firmly in support of Israel after this. And I think the president released a statement, I think maybe 30 minutes ago, <laughs> publicly. Having, at least locally here in Georgia, that much political support, what does that do for this cause, if anything? Well, I think uh, Israelis are always looking for supporters to their very existence and looking for support militarily, economically. Um, anytime someone can come out and put their hand up and say, I like what you do. We support your democracy and Jewish self-determination. People are very positive about that. Um, I think there are many people in the United States who would also like to see um, the living conditions or the economic conditions of the Palestinians improve. Um, but that won't happen now ever so quickly, in part because of Israeli domestic politics and because of this um, horrendous attack on Israeli civilians. And the devastation we've yet to see because now we're hearing stories about men, women, and children being kidnapped yeah. and being some of them being actually taken back to the Gaza Strip. So um, as I said, the first 46, first 48 hours or first 24, um, let me put it differently, you and I may be speaking in three or four days.